Okay, so we are going to start right now. Uh, we have a little over 40 people on the line. Uh, my name is Mr. Duran. I'm the parent coordinator for the school. I'm the person who sends the, the messages and the person who uh, answer all your emails. And, um, you know, I'm the contact person for, for all your questions and answers. Hopefully, we can answer all your questions today. So uh, let me then introduce our principal, Mr. Mercedes. So he yes, oh, and welcome uh, for us. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure to have the opportunity um, to be part of your your kids' life. And so, one of the things that that I like to say is that uh, we we have the enviable task of taking the baton from the elementary school uh, to now making sure that uh, we you know we fill in the gaps and so that we can prepare your most precious possession, which are your, your kids, and make them uh, ready to take on the world, right? Make them college ready, uh, college and career ready. Uh, and so that's what that's our task as we uh, receive them, hopefully in September, uh, to provide that task. Uh, we are in a process now, uh, when we started this venture, which was a couple of years ago, uh, to become a one-to-one, a -one with with the ipads and now it, it comes to the to the point that everybody is in the process of becoming one-to-one -one. but we started four years ago and so um you know we have the structure and we just want to take the opportunity want to take the opportunity to really thank you uh for us is is, is a very serious uh, endeavor uh the education of your of your children so thank you again and welcome so I'm Mr. Ceballos, I'm the person who answers most of your questions when I call you, um, when Mr. Durant doesn't have it. Uh, we have been in communication all this month, so I will continue um, reaching out to you and working with you to make sure that, they, that your child is in the right place in terms of classes, in terms of programming, and so forth and so on. And welcome. The members uh, of the administration, introduce yourselves, please. Welcome families, incoming sixth grade families to MS390. My name is Ms. Verona. It's a pleasure to um, be part of the middle school 390 community. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your child's life for the next three years. We are looking forward to working and learning with you. Um, we believe at 390, we follow the social emotional learning program. It's called uh, The Leader in Me. And we believe that um, everyone is a leader, parents, staff, and students. So we welcome suggestions. We welcome uh, recommendations from our parents. We also believe that, uh, we also believe in an abundance mentality. We believe that all of us as a school community have a lot to contribute. So, you know, it will be our pleasure to work with you for the next three years, like I said, and we honor your commitment to your child's education. Hello, family. Welcome to the Middle School 390 experience. We are just one portion of the family that welcomes you to embrace you, whether we are remote or we are in brick and mortar. Know that we have you and your children's best interests at heart. Yes, we are a community that is looking to develop leaders, and your little people are definitely leaders. So we wanna make sure that you understand that part of our philosophy and part of our culture uh, really embarks on empowering students with leadership and life skills that'll help them get through more than just middle school, more than just high school, college and beyond. Once again, my name is Ms. Harris. I am one of the assistant principals, part of this amazing team, and we welcome you to the 390 experience. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Is Ms. Mason on the line? Hello, welcome parents, good afternoon. Um, it's such a pleasure to know that we have another set of students who are coming in. There's a lot of great things happening at MS390 and I look forward to working with you, the parents and the students um, so that we could inspire greatness together. Thank you very much for coming out today. Hello everyone, welcome incoming parents. My name is Virginia Poe. I am a grade, grade eight counselor. I am the person responsible 
for the transition from middle school to high school application process. And I'm also a support counselor for the bilingual academy in the dual language uh, program at our school. Um, we're very excited to receive your our new incoming sixth graders and we look forward to an amazing experience. Thank you again. My name is Ms. Pohu. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Carr. I am the uh, school counselor for grades six and seven, and I am so looking forward to welcoming our new class into MS390. I'm looking for great things from them. I'm looking to help them make the transition from uh, elementary school into middle school. So welcome, and thank you all for being here today. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ms. Harold. I am the ELA and Social Studies teacher for 601 and 602. Um, welcome to the MS390 community, and I cannot wait to see and meet all our students. Hello, I am Mr. Pacchiana. I am the homeroom teacher for 602, which is the honors program, which we'll speak about a little bit later. And I teach math to classes 601 and 602. And I'm looking forward to a new year and new challenges. And I hope to see you all in September, one way or another. Hello, everyone. My name is Ms. Dreben. I am the math and science teacher for 603 and 605 at this time. Um, I'm welcoming you. And um, we can't wait to meet your children and work with them and teach them the best that we can teach them about mathematics and science, well, like Mr. Pakiana said, one way or another, in one situation or another. Welcome parents and students. My name is Ms. Lee. I am the homeroom teacher for 603. I teach ELA to 603 and 605 and will be the teacher for social studies. Hello, I'm Ms. Ortiz. I am the second half of the ELA and social studies team. I work very closely with Ms. Driven and with Ms. Lee. I welcome all of you and thank you for being here. And I look forward to our new year in September and meeting you and all your children. Hello, uh, my name is Ms. Nisha. I teach English and social studies to class 606. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to be part of this meeting today. Hi, I'm Ms. Romero. I'm the math and science teacher for 606 and 602 and I'm very eager to meet your children this upcoming school year. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ms. Ritos. I am the math teacher for the bilingual and the dual language program for 604 and 607. Thank you for being here. We hope to see you in September. Welcome parents. My name is Ms. Bejo. I also work with Ms. Ritos in the bilingual and dual language academy. I'm eager to work with you closely to ensure that our children become those leaders that we believe that they can be. So, and hopefully this presentation coming forward, we can give you some information about what our program entails, our curriculum, and so on. Okay, okay so my name is Ms. Danza. I'm the uh, sixth grade ENL teacher. I hope everyone's doing well, and I'm looking forward to working with your children in September. So now we're going to start with a presentation. Ms. Rito, please take the screen. Um, well, welcome, families. Um, so we want to start with a quote that says, the best time for new beginnings is now. Um, and I think this is an excellent quote for everything you know, that we're going on through now in this pandemic and as your uh, child embarks on a new journey. Um, so every day is a new beginning. This is the best time for new beginning. And we really do hope that um, uh, your child's new beginning, you know, they have an exceptional journey at MS390. So welcome. Welcome, families. Um, our MS390 mission statement is posted, and our school-wide expectations are also posted. Our mission is to provide a structured, safe, and supportive environment where students, parents, and staff focus on inspiring greatness throughout academic diversity and discovery inquiry. Our school-wide expectations, we at MS390 expect our students to become independent learners. We seek opportunities to take risks. Students are to be part of a culture of collaboration where we, they take an active role in their community to advocate for change and equity. Inspiring greatness is our motto at MS390. So grade-wide expectations, I'll pass it over to 
um, any of the members of the team because we are a collaborative team. I, uh, expectations, uh, exercise the seven habits daily. Uh, these are habits of the leader in me in which uh, Ms. Verona um, stated. Independent learners invest in their progress and growth. Attendance and participation, uh, actively participating in the learning process on a daily basis. Assignments, we have daily submission of quality assignments and apply learned skills to real world scenarios. As you can see here on the, on the side, we have a picture of the leader in me a tree in which it shows the seven habits of successful leaders are uh, something that we um, exercise on a daily basis and will help your child progress and learn and form goals lifelong goals so we have a very rigorous cu curriculum um, we have been working the teachers as teams we've been working on implementing the next generation standards which the kids will be assessed on starting next year. and ELA, we have the Expeditionary Learning Curriculum. We've been following the Engage New York Curriculum in Mathematics. Um, this was our first year doing Amplify Science, so we're gonna continue that next year. Um, we have a spoken se sequence for history, um, a very digitally and technologically based art program that Myth Soriano will introduce you to later. And we also feature a lot of rigor as well in our health and physical education classes. And we have, we are a member of the Chess in the Schools program that is part of the city. So tying that into our curriculum, kids get to play chess once a week and we encourage them to connect it to other parts of their curriculum. The Leader in Me is something that we do every day it infuses the seven habits into our curriculum as well as our daily life and highlighting the connections between the two and how they are re relevant towards each other. Uh, we do quote, culturally responsive teaching and we have a student leadership digital portfolio program which is going to document and demonstrate all the students growth from their beginning of their journey which is in September through the end and hopefully beyond. Yes, so we have several digital platforms that we use on a daily basis in a classroom. So the first one is Lyseo, which is a reading program. Students will be reading at least 30 minutes each day in the classroom. School for One and Google um, Classroom will be used to upload work, to write their essays, to do on a daily day lessons on these platforms and IXL is a program where the students can practice math skills and also some ELA skills to improve their learning depending on the topic. Thank you. Um, general education, Ms. Romero, Ms. Nisha. So I cover the math portion for 606 and math skills for 602 as well. Um, we do switch between math and ELA teachers for 606. First of all, um, we evaluate the student progress. We like to maintain high interest, engagement, and achievement. And by that, by using the progress that we know that they're making, it helps us see what we need to do in order to support them or what we need to do in order to challenge them. So I did see in the chat that some parents were asking if we do use Google Classroom. We do use Google Classroom on a daily basis, including iExcel and LifeSale. Ms. Nisha, do you want to do the differentiated task? Yeah, so in terms of differentiation, mm -hmm. when it comes to small group instruction, we focus on um, determining what kind of skills can we assign on iXL and LightSo, and who can work independently on Google Classroom. With video conferencing, since we're doing remote learning, um, we've been using that heavily to be able to contact and keep in contact with students. Um, in terms of when we're in the classroom, of course, um, we'll be using small group instruction more so and visual and video instructions and um, different type of aids to be able to help students, students be able to understand the material that we're teaching for the lesson. Thank you. The integrated co-teaching is Liam, Ms. Ortiz, could you guys? We are the ICT team, uh, myself, Ms. Uh, Dreben and Ms. Lee. Uh, we are both, I'm the general ed teacher. 
uh, for ELA and social studies. Ms. Lee is the special ed teacher. Um, and we both work together to combine both the general and special ed student setting, as well as um, differentiate any lessons needed on a student needed basis. ICT is 12 students um, with IEPs, up to 12 students with IEPs in a classroom, and the rest are general education students. So in this program, for the students with IEP, um, there were parents who were asking for some of the accommodations that our school has. We have a very great special education team here. So we do have speech language therapy. We do have counseling for the students. We do have one-to-one -one service for reading literacy. It's an intervention program. So if your student is at a very low reading level, we do one-to-one -one intervention to make sure that they grow to our grade level. And we also do have sets, which is a small group instruction, if that is an accommodation that is in your student's IEP. So if your child has an accommodation that needs to be addressed, you can always reach out to us, find out if we have the service, but it's more than likely that we do have that service provided for you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Thank you very much. Um, in the honors program, we have our class 601 and 602, where we are a Regents tracked class, where our students take the Regents exams to earn high school credits before they even get to high school. Um, we use specialized advancement opportunities um, by providing students or exposing students to ELA plus, math plus, and science lab. Within our classes, we also have hands-on project-based learning and real-world relevance uh, with the classes that we provide and the type of exposure of the content that we provide to our students. In our classes, our students are also able to have college and career readiness and maintain an 85% average in every single class. I'm a math teacher for the honors program. Um, in addition to all that, uh, underlying it all is our belief in the growth mindset. Um, wherever our students are, we encourage that they grow and progress as they go through middle school and become young adults. Um, I just want to speak to the technology aspects. We do feature a lot of technology, all the teachers across the board, across the grades. Um, we were very prepared for remote learning. It was a somewhat seamless transition because we are so heavily oriented towards technology. Um, our goal is to get these young adults to take initiative and be autonomous in their learning. Um, so whereas we have the support system with the staff and the parents and the student, we try to, by the time they get to eighth grade and beyond, we try to get them to be more in independent, more than interdependent. Um, in math, we integrate art as much as possible. And speaking on the hands-on projects and real-world relevance, we try to integrate any real-world examples and promote in the students how they're going to use math and ELA and any subject in the real world. Bilingual and Dual Language Academy, Ms. Bello and Mr. Ritos. Again, welcome everyone in the Bilingual and Dual Language Academy. Ms. Ritos and I work very closely to ensure that our students, they become young leaders that take ownership in their education and they develop the skills that they need in order to be ready for college. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, in the process, they become bilingual. They come bilingual too, biliterate, which is a very different term. And they learn to respect and appreciate diversity. Well, being the fact that we are in an environment where children come from different parts of the country. Um, it's very specific. The bilingual dual language program is Spanish and English. That's the two languages that we're currently offering. And when it comes to dual language, which is very separate from the bilingual transitional program, we're looking at students uh, taking classes for about 50% of their time instruction is in English only. And then the other 50% of the time, students are uh, mastering those skills as well in Spanish. So there are 50 and 50% dividing the language throughout their education and academic journey at MS390. Um, the environment becomes automatically culturally responsive, being that we have had students coming from different walks of, 
uh, life or different journeys or different countries. We've had students from Ecuador, students from the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, El Salvador, Venezuela, and uh, Honduras uh, recently. And it's a, it's a journey and it's beautiful to have all these children together under one roof, sharing their experiences and growing together, and learning to be receptive to other cultures and also embracing diversity. Um, our goal is to make sure that ultimately, like any other program at MS390, in sixth grade, we all follow the same curriculum. We do exactly the same, thing, but we just have a different approach, which is that second language that we're adding to it. Uh, we make sure that students are ready to read, to write, to speak, and affectionate listening in both languages equally by eighth grade. And one thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to dual language is that we do bring students that already have an experience in a dual language program. They come from elementary schools where they have had about six years of uh, prior introduction and exposure to a program that's half 50% Spanish, 50% English. So by the time they reach to us, the students can speak Spanish and write Spanish at a certain level. So make no mistake, this is not a program that uh, trains to learn Spanish from scratch. It's a program that continues the journey of other schools that are around us that host uh, dual language programs. Um, so for the bilingual transit, it's a, it's a transitional program. Um, we have the incoming native speakers of Spanish. So many of them are maybe newcomers. It might be their first year. Some of them may have um, a couple of years in the country already in schooling. Um, but the program overall is to help students uh, transition, like it says, to learn how to read, how to write, and speak in English. Um, we must keep in mind that in this program, it is a gradual learning process. So in one year, it's very um, hard for many students to master or well, become proficient in English. Um, it might take three years, it might take more. Um, it's a journey that both you know parents, student, and teacher take together. Um, we focus on the student's home language to help them um, develop the new language skills because um, you can read and write in Spanish and th th those same sets of skills will translate over to English. And our goal overall is we've had, we actually have students that started off in bilingual and eventually we were able to push them into the dual language program where they were able to very fluently use English and Spanish. By all means, all students are required to have the same kinds of experiences throughout the sixth grade. We all share the same activities and we all benefit from the same curriculum. And platforms as well. And platforms, yes. Okay, thank you very, very much. Uh, Ms. Danza, Ms. Yes. Lucille Danza, please. Okay, so again, my name is Ms. Danza. And so my purpose as an ENL teacher is to help English language learners attain the highest level of academic success and language proficiency. So therefore, I use uh, various strategies to help students in the four modalities, which include reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Also, I prepare English language learners for the nicest math exam, in which they take annually in the springtime. So my goal is to help students show growth and provide the support they need to move to the next testing level. So I provided an example. For example, an entering student in September can hopefully become an emergence, emerging or transitioning student by the springtime of that year. And it is possible for them to move up two levels because everyone is different. Everyone le learns at a different pace. So it could be three years that they become proficient in English or it could even be more. Uh, the next one, I, I focus greatly on helping students acquire academic language and support them while learning content in ELA. So I, I like the content from the expeditionary learning curriculum. So I support the students with the content and focus mainly on the language, the academic language. And my support helps prepare them for the New York State ELA exam as well. And so the lastly, our motto at MS390 is inspiring greatness. So I implement culturally responsive teaching approaches to address the needs of our linguistic and culturally diverse population by making le learning meaningful so students can be engaged and improve their proficiency in the English language. And going back to what uh, Mrs. Bayo was saying and Ms. Cerritos was saying is that 
in order for them to become proficient in English, they have to be proficient in their own language. So thank you very much, Ms. Danza. Without further ado, Ms. Oriano, digital art and design. Um, the team can help in with it. Your, um, Mr. Bakiana already gave a little bit of a hint about it. In the digital art and design classes, students learn problem solving, perseverance, empathy, and creativity. Digital art is a project-based approach that opens up a variety of possibilities and ways for students to learn and awaken their interests in challenging areas. Students can analyze, investigate, research, and come up with solutions to address problems in different ways. And this approach helps students with different learning styles. In um, digital art and design, students are able to learn the proper digital art and design procedures and appropriate use of the materials. Uh, Ms. Soriano works very closely with Mr. Paquiana and myself where they're a, their students are able to work on many different projects um, and they are they utilize the base instruction of art and the design procedures. They create their best work through perseverance and constructive feedback. So Ms. Soriano is able to provide feedback on the spot for students and they're able to use that feedback and pay it forward to the work that they're doing next. Um, the art based themes that they use are in art history and art Art, um, and contemporary arts and world culture. Um, yeah, on top of all that, Ms. Soriano is really good at communicating with the rest of the team, um, all grades, and aligning her curriculum to tie into our curriculums uh, as best we can. So if there's any connections between math and art, we definitely make that explicit, as well as all the other subjects. Uh, I saw a question on the chat, what platform do we use, which I cannot answer, um, but if anybody else knows. Yeah, for digital art, um, she usually uses Adobe, um, Canvas. Um, I think Ms. Um, Daza answered that when she used Canvas, but I know um, while teaching in my class, she uses Adobe Pro, um, and she also is able to have students do photo montage, use uh, 3D application, um, game design, which is doing Minecraft with some students now. Um, in addition to that, um, we were able to go to the museum of the moving image where students were exposed to um, creating games and the ability to use um, different applications to create their drawings. Um, my students are able to use some of the projects that Ms. Soriano has given them to create um, animations for um, versions of a, a, a book. Um, so they're able to use all the, the different digital art and design that Ms. Soriano um, currently teaches them and pay them forward to the different, um, to the other content. Yeah, I know she I would just them like to as much as, as much as possible in terms of different ways to do digital art. I've seen her use a lot of different things. I would just like to add that some of the art is exhibiting in, the, in our Instagram page and Facebook page. We are competing with uh, other schools in a, in a Bronx contest, and we put all the, the paintings, the digital paintings that are uh, participating in that contest. At this time, we have the last slide where we thank you. The sixth grade team thanks you very much for coming to our presentation. We welcome you. So what I'm going to do is that I wrote down some of the questions. I know that other parents have the same uh, questions. Um, one of the questions was, well, what are our passing grades? And Ms. Poe uh, answered that question. The passing grade is 65, but we don't, we, we encourage our students to get to, to at least a 70, but think about this, that 70, it will be like on the floor, you know, and 85, it will be something like eye level, and we strive for that 90, 95. Right, Ms. Ms. Driven? Yes. Um, even with uh, IXL math, we strive for the SMART score of 80, which um, represents that the child is pushing himself or herself. We, we strive for children that are very aware of their own academic and personal growth. It's a it's, a, it's, a, it's something that laces the entire sixth grade team together because they're going to 
with the world outside. One of the things that I'd like to address, um, because we're in the chat about the sports program, we do have an after school program and we have a um, basketball team. And it happens every year. We have teams and the students uh, have to uh, try out for. In addition to the programs that we have, we also have a full, full um, music program where the students learn to play music and we have a full orchestra. Um, Miss Mayor, I think that she was detained and she hasn't been, you know, she's delayed, come to the meeting to present the music program. Mm -hmm. But if you, you, your child is interested, uh, as soon as we come in September, we ask the students who are interested in music to audition with Miss Mayor. She takes them under the wing and work with them. If they never done music before, but they like to, she also works with them in the same way. Um, also, one of the, the questions that I saw in the chat was the school uniform. I don't know if you could see it. This is uh, the polo that we use. This is a, a um, light gray polo. It has the logo on the side and the bottoms are navy blue bottoms. Uh, hopefully, we will be able to go into the school during the summer and we'll let you know when, okay? Um, another question that I saw there was if the children were gonna keep their, their school's account. I'm not sure if you're referring to the individual school's account, whatever program they use, like the Dojo or, or um, iReady. Uh, we don't use those programs, so they're not gonna carry the same information. However, there is an account called NYC, um, NYC accounts. Those you will have all through high school. So those accounts will carry over to our school. But as soon as your child comes in, uh, he or she will gonna get a an MS390 email with a G um, drive and all the information that that they were required to start doing all their portfolios online. Uh, another question that I saw was a there was a parent asking if there was other parents from the same school, and I think that is a great idea. So if you if you want to network among yourselves and see was group of students coming from what school i think that's great so that way you you have a network before you come in into our school another question was is a spanish uh, is spanish a subject and it's not it's not a subject is uh the dual language works some um subjects are in spanish and some are in english but uh spanish as a subject to teach spanish no we don't have we don't have that. They also would like to have the Facebook account and the Twitter account. Oh. So this is how the the app, the our app the tablet looks. These are all the apps that are available. And these are some of the ones that my daughter uses only. There are other apps that other kids use it for different things. Like for example, we have a Minecraft uh, group and they do their own Minecraft stuff, so they have uh, apps tailored to, to their devices. So in technology, our school is very big. I do trainings for parents uh, to train them on, on the programs that we do and how to get their email address, how to view their grades online, and so forth. Duran, in terms yeah. of um, buying the, the school uniform, Yes. We, we, I answer on the chat that we're waiting for guidance from the Department of Education to see when we can go to the building, but you, we're just waiting. So hopefully over the summer. But you will hear from us in two weeks with another meeting to give you additional information about registration, give you additional information on uh, a school uniform and so forth and so on. We're just waiting for the DOE to give us further gu guidance. There's a question about safe distancing and coming back in, in September. And um, we are working very diligent on educating our school community. And we're waiting for further gu guidance from the Department of Education in regards to that. Mr. Mercedes, if you'd like to elaborate. Yeah, so um, what we're doing now is, um, Mr. Bajas has taken the lead on it. Um, and every, um, so, so we started a couple of uh, weeks ago talking about the importance of social distancing 
and and the importance of hygiene. And so one of the things that we've been doing is uh, educating uh, families and educating students and, and and making sure that our staff understand uh, the importance of being safe. And so I think when we go about it through the educational uh, realm, uh, it, it, um, it makes it that much easier to uh, you know make people understand why is it important for us to be you know uh, physically distant uh, until this pandemic you know runs its course. So it's very important that we practice you know washing hands properly, uh, making sure that we use soap, uh, making sure that in the cafeteria, in the gymnasium, and in the classroom we exercise that caution, and and we can all be physically uh, distant uh, and and be safe at the same time. There is a question related to instruction and learning, and I guess uh, this would be for any of our teachers. If uh, the teacher notices the student not, not understanding the topic, will there be a one-on-one -on -one session, or do we continue the lesson? So I was kind of answering it in the chat box, but if it's a question that could be addressed quickly, the teacher will obviously answer it on the spot. But if it's some additional support that the student needs after the students are dismissed into their independent part of the lesson the teacher will definitely sit with them and there will also be small group instruction happening in each classroom depending on the student's level depending on their understanding so there will be individualized instruction in every single classroom regardless of its dual language bilingual um, honors ict doesn't matter. The teachers are always there to support the students on an individual level. I, I see that somebody is asking me if I could facilitate uh, the parents' meeting uh, or it were parent network for PS81. If you're from PS81, send me your emails and I'll make sure that all of you are together in a group. I would be happy to facilitate. Uh, for the directory of our school, it's in our website, ms390.com. You will notice that the website that I share with you was ms390.com slash info. That is a website only for incoming uh, students. But our normal website is just uh, ms390.com. So after this call, I'm more than happy at the decision that we've made to have her join your team. I wanted to ask an additional question in regards to the Parents Association. Because um, uh, I'm a single... She's our only child, obviously, and we like to be very heavily involved in her education. And our biggest issue is obviously because of our work hours and working outside of the state of New York, it's nearly impossible to attend meetings when the association gets together. Is there an option, especially with the school being so technology driven, where meetings can take place using platforms such as this so that we can participate via online you know, meetings and stuff like that? Yes, yes, we love that. We have been standing in the past for those meetings when the parents want to participate. What we do is that we have been doing um, calls and have them on the line. But now we can do, um, we will offer for workshops and for PA meetings and SLT meetings, both options. They're online, through Google Meet, and also through in person. Yes, and if the case is that you're not gonna have your child with us, uh, I I will beg you to let us know as soon as possible because you are occupying a seat that another person who really wants to join the school is waiting for. So right now we have over a hundred students on our waiting list, and we would love to call everyone that wants to come into our school as soon as possible. So that I I have a, um, I think I'm I'm the core is the the councilman uh councilman cabrera and councilman cabrera is a is an advocate of our school he um invests a lot of of the resources the city's resources in our school and he's one of the individuals that has uh transformed has helped transform our school from a one-to-one -one, um ipad to laptop actually two for one uh and um he's on the phone and he just wanted to come in and say hi and, and welcome the parents to our to our school community hey great thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to share with all the parents but i want to take a moment to thank principal mercedes and all the staff all the teachers and school counselors they're doing an amazing amazing job 
I want to tell your parents you're very, very blessed uh, if you're sending your child uh, to uh, this wonderful school. We have made a lot of investments, brand new auditorium, like it was mentioned, uh, iPads, uh, programs, uh, orchestra. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing all the opportunities that the children have. And But the biggest asset that the school has is just the wonderful teachers and staff that just really care about the kids. And I think that's what makes a school just thrive. Uh, just want to leave with one encouragement, and that is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 56. Uh, my children went through elementary, middle school, high school, and college. And if there was one time where kids really need you, it's in middle school. As a former school counselor, I can tell you that kids go through a lot of identity crisis. Uh, they're trying to figure out who they are. This is when they start making friends at another level. And perhaps you may think, oh, they, they made it to middle school. They don't need me. They need you. Your role will change. You'll be more like a coach. But the, you, you're needed more than ever. The more you can get involved in the PTA, the more you can get involved um, in all the activities and events taking place in school, uh, even through the social distancing season that we're going to go through. And it's just a season. It's not going to be here forever. Um, it, it, when you're vested in, your children will say, wow, it, school really matters to my parents. It's going to matter to me. It's, just, it's something that's more, less taught, more, more taught. They're going to catch that. They're going to be like, okay, wow, this is important for mommy. This is important to daddy. Uh, it must be important. And so that that is just so critical, so critical. We have kids that have gone to uh, specialized schools that I'm sure uh, Principal Mercedes uh, will, will, will share with schools those were. But we're so proud uh, to see that, uh, you know, uh, proportionally to all the schools we're doing so well right here in the Bronx. So thank you so much. Uh, you'll see me around. Uh, and uh, again, uh, you're, you're very, very blessed to have your child come to the school. God bless. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. I also okay. want to add to Councilman, maybe uh, forgot, um, Councilman Cabrera, that you also are supporting us with establishing hydroponics classroom. We're going to be having two hydroponic classrooms next year, thanks to you and to your funding. And we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to be eating healthy. That's good. They're gonna be eating healthy. They're gonna they're gonna see. They're gonna do their own planting, and it's a great experience, you know. And they get to apply the sciences. Uh, they can have another level of discussion, you know, when they see something that they were part of. And there's nothing like exposure. And, and the school that the child, one of our kids, made it to is Stuyvesant. 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 Yes, it's the best high school in all of New York City. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Muchas gracias, and we'll we'll definitely uh, we'll see everyone around when school starts in September. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank Peace you so much. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Uh, one of the questions that I see on the chat is the is if we have a basketball uh, for girls, and we all, we always offer it. Uh, there's some years that we do, some years that we don't. Because sometimes the girls prefer to do volleyball, or sometimes they prefer to do music during during that time. So it varies depending on the on the interest. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Ceballos, maybe you want to answer this one: uh, if we're going to have an orientation before school starts. Yes, we are. We are uh, just waiting for finalizing the classes, finalizing the waiting list and putting everything in perspective. We also want to give you the experience of the children communicating directly with their future teacher before the end of the school year. So like that, they make that connection in case that we go remotely on September. So we're working behind behind doors uh, to make sure that you have all this set up for you. Um, but we need parents to make decisions and to let us know ASAP because that waiting list is very, very long. Parents are calling us every day and we have we are right now way over capacity so we have to start streamlining 
forming those classes and then we, we will be contacting, contacting you directly. One thing that we want to ask the parents, just in case, um, is to have an iPad, a computer, or any type of device to make sure that if we start something over the summer or in June, that we have contact with the, the, the teachers can contact the students directly. And there was a parent they asked about summer assignment. Yes, we do. But again, we are in the process of uh, finalizing all the arrangements to that. Usually, we assign the students to do some uh, reading and some math. And we also have a, a reading list that will be posted on the website and will be sent to you as well. Are we going to um, support the families with the um, DOE devices, um, the application portal, if they haven't um, basically uh, signed up for the DOE um, iPad? Uh, yes, we will be giving them the um, the link to request the DOE iPad, and those parents that need assistance will be guiding them through the process. One of the things that um, we we want to be able to do, and and what the city wants is is for uh, to be able to do remote things, right? So uh, in the event that there's a snowstorm, that there's no loss of instruction, right? They, that we can go and say, you know what, uh, 20 inches tomorrow, we're going to go into the remote, you know, learning and kids have that option, right? Uh, so so in our school, um, we, we have that capability. Um, not every school has that. So as we are coming, as we are transitioning you into our building, um, and giving you um, that that format, right, in that platform, we want to make sure that kids over the summer can can go in and, and enjoy Lysail, which is our our independent reading app, and we have over fifteen thousand books, and so that we can get them going through summer sale. But what the you know that device is very important uh, because we just don't have the ability to go into the school and actually take one out. But the process is that the DOE has ensured that anyone that applies for a DOE um, issue iPad with internet access uh, gets that opportunity. And oftentimes, information don't flow to us as quick as we want them to, right? So we want to make sure that uh, one of the things that we do tonight is to provide you with the information that you are entitled to have uh, a loaner. They call it a loaner, and it has free Wi-Fi. And so. We want to make sure that every family has the opportunity to uh, fill out the application and, and, and that the request is made. And we can also help with expediting it too, because we've, we've been doing that, you know, behind the scene, uh, expediting the, the facilitation of those devices. Mr. Mercedes, if you allow me to just add one more thing about the iPads, uh, the number one thing that stands out is that the internet is extremely fast. Um, from the parental perspective, when I had conversations with them, uh, they were delighted to know that they can disconnect their internet services because it was extremely, it was costly. They could not afford the, the monthly payments that they were doing, and I will recommend it to any parent uh, to make sure that if you don't already have it, because most of our parents already have from other children in elementary. This is important. Many of you may already have access to these devices because your children attended an elementary school who did not offer one-to-one. -one. We did, and therefore that's why our children are now requesting it. So feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than welcome to help you out with the process. The turnaround time, Mr. Mercedes, it varies depending on location. Uh, so it's like a two or three day in between for many of the areas. Those students who currently have a loaner from you know from the from 109 for example and they don't have the iPad they have that other monster device that, that's hard to work with can they exchange that for an iPad definite definite um you, what what you want to do is you want to make sure that um I know that Mr. Duran can share the link and that you know um fill that out as soon as you can now this is what I this is this is new information you this is you know so please make okay. sure that you know they, regardless of what you have that you want to have a DOE device. Um, yeah, just give up, Mr. Mercedes. A parent asked if it's an exchange. There's no exchange. If you have a device that you obtain it from the prior school of your child, just put it on hold and wait for instructions on how to return it if that is ever 
ask of you, but don't just request it. Everyone that qualifies, we get it. We'll get it. You just have to okay. give your your child's ID number and the school information, and and that's it. You get the device. There, there is a question in the chat. Uh, I'm sorry about registration. We will call to another meeting to give you further guidance on registration once we get the information from the DOE. Uh, we have Ms. Mayer on, on the call. I am the music teacher, and the music department at MS390 has gotten really big. We have a full orchestra, a string orchestra with violin, viola, cello, and bass. Uh, if you want to see how the orchestra sounds, you can see it on our on the school's Instagram. We made a recording just a few months ago, right before uh, the pandemic. Hit. Also on Mr. Duran's YouTube channel, MS390, you can see a performance of the orchestra at a competition last year. Um, the orchestra is really good. The kids really love it. And we also have, for the, uh, that just started up this year, a uh, 10 keyboard studio lab uh, where the students can learn to play keyboards on headphones. There's a program they use. And that option is also available. So string instruments, keyboard, and just general music theory and understanding of all the concepts for great appropriate music understanding. So I would hope that everyone would be encouraged to keep it up because it's really great for getting into high school and college and scholarships. Can I ask one final question? I'm with the transition to intermediate school, and I'm assuming that you're going from class to class. The kids are going to have multiple classes a day. On the average, how many classes a day do they have? The, um, I'm going to give a little information that teachers can join in. Depending on the class, the, the classes that are self-contained, all the classrooms, all the classes are um, mostly in the same classroom. Um, math and science are in the same classroom, ELA and social studies in another classroom. Usually the teachers switch. For okay. the ICT classes, all the classes are in the same classroom. The teachers come in, they also switched. And they have okay. ELA and social studies in the same classroom, math and science in another classroom. Uh, the same model is for the um, general ed classes and for the bilingual classes. So the students have to move me, not in every single class. They do move to go to the gym, uh, to go to music, and to go to the cafeteria, in addition to switching from one classroom to another. Okay. Um, for the sixth grade, all the sixth grade classes are on the first floor. And all the students move from one classroom to another within the same space, the same floor. Um, and Ms. Eva, just, just to reiterate, as a parent myself, I could be asking the same kind of question just because, you know, they're transitioning to becoming more independent, but yet still we can't let go and we wouldn't let go so soon. So for the peace of mind of the parents, everyone in the sixth grade for a very I can remember exact period of time if anyone can join, jump in on that, but we ensure that we walk our students when they have to transition. Uh, it's usually for the first two to three months so that the child feels safe transitioning to gym and going to lunch and coming back from lunch. There's always that visibility of an adult transitioning the child to their respective places. Uh, there is not much of transitioning in some classes because the teachers will come to them, but those classes, like I said, gym, uh, music, for instance, or dance, they might need to move around, but the first few months, we are responsible for ensuring that this child, and I'm sorry my camera is off, I didn't realize, um, that the child knows where they're going and feels safe and secure knowing how to get there. Then after that, we have to do what we know how to do best as parents. We have to let go and cut the strings and allow the children to show us that they have learned on how to do it on their own, that they are the leaders and they can follow the norms in place in order to make it successfully to their classes because it's a safe environment yes they get that little bit of help at the beginning so that they feel comfortable and safe just want to share to the parents that uh please note that your child coming into our school uh is probably 10 11 maybe 12 years old and a lot of changes happen in their in their bodies in their hormones right so expect that this person is going to grow into a young adult, into a teenager, by uh, the time that, that um, your child hits uh, eighth grade. So it's going to be a lot of changes, and it's going to be a lot of new things that, that you're going to have to adapt, and we can help you through that process. 
Uh, we always have parent support. We have the meetings where we could uh, share uh, uh, tips, information. Also, the teachers meet once a week with, with all the parents. You don't need an appointment. You just come at the time that is selected, and it's every week, so you get the, the information. But know this, that your child is growing, and middle school is called middle school because it's in that transition time of your child's life. There's uh, one more question, Mr. Duran, in okay. regards to um, the protocols for bullying. Is Ms. Carr on the line? So we are very much on top of, you know, any uh, situations that are, would be considered bullying because we want everyone to um, be comfortable in our school. Um, but recognizing that children are going to have interpersonal um, issues, um, we try, well, I jump on them pretty quickly and resolve them. What about uh, COVID-19 protocols? That's another question. But we are working diligently on providing education to our families and to the staff on social distancing, hygiene, hand washing. And once we form the classes, you will receive the same information, especially as pertains to the students coming in September. There was another question uh, regarding the PA hours. Um, every year there's PA elections and whoever runs and get uh, elected on a seat, they get together and they decide their schedule. So there's no set hours for people to, to go in and, and do. The group decides what is the hours and what are, what are the, the projects that they want to take on. There, there was a question in the chat box about the environment, and I do, I'm not clear whether you refer to the environment and the community or the environment in MS390. So the environment in MS390 is that we support the student social emotional development. We have a lot of services in the building to make sure that the students feel safe and connected to adults, to caring adults. And we have a lot of opportunities for students to develop themselves as leaders. Uh, and productive members of the school community. Whatever happens outside in the community, we address them as they come, but understand we can only do and take care of what we can take care of inside the building. Uh, I, I would just like to share, I live in a community. My daughter goes to the school. And if you look for trouble, trouble finds you. I always encourage all the children to let us know what happens to let us know how can we help and to always pair up at least with one person in the school that that person could be the bridge to meeting other adults and other kids in the in the school building go ahead miss carr i was going to say that respect for all is the strong suit of our school and as mr durant said as long as the children come and let us know what problems they may be having we work very diligently to make sure that those problems are addressed we don't let anything go, um, you know, by the wayside. And we want all our children in our school to feel safe. And we are very uh, vigilant to jump on any situation uh, as quickly as we know about it and um, try to resolve the issue between the parents, uh, between the students. Someone else just typed a question. Are cell phones allowed in the school? What's the protocol for mobile phones? Uh, because of the pandemic, and um we just don't know we 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 just gonna um i'm just gonna ask answer the question by we we're going to be needing further guidance from the department of education um on how they want to restart in september and that a lot of things that used to be are no longer going to be and so this is the you know the governor says that the new normal uh and so we just just have to just wait to see what the process and what the procedures are going to be as we begin to open in September. Thank you very much to everybody for coming. Uh, like, like we said, you can always reach out to us. Mr. Campos also uh, spoke to you, Miss Lisa. Those are people that work with us also. So whatever we could do to make this this transition a lot easier for you. Okay. Good night, folks. Have a good day. Visit in your school, okay? Bye. 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 Bye.